So thank you for having us and inviting us to be part of this conference. Uh, standard disclaimer that these are the views of John and I and don't represent anyone at Brookings at the Brookings Institution or and their funders or anyone from uh, the research staff or Board of Governors uh, Federal Reserve System. So with that, let's see how much we can talk about in 10 to 12 minutes. So John and I are thinking here about how households and individuals are preparing for retirement. But I think we can all talk, know that you know, how to define preparedness is not easy, right? Do we wanna think about some benchmark replacement rate? This was you know, discussed a little bit in the previous session. Do we wanna think about some benchmark from a life cycle model? And I think we wanna take a step back and say, you know, we don't, we're not defining what the right uh, level of wealth uh, to spend in retirement is, but we want what we're going to do here is to look across the wealth distributions, um, and we're going to compare cohorts at the same ages. So we're going to look at you know different cohorts at ages 40 and 50. And what we're going to do is we call here relative rank distributions and percentile point comparisons, which I will define on the next slide. So the first question we ask is where would someone at a given percentile of their own wealth distribution, again, within their cohort, have been in a prior cohort, right? So that we're calling these the relative rank distributions. With the idea that if we think that current, you know, in a hypothetical world, if say maybe 20% of current retirees facing a shortfall, do we think that more or less compared to sort of an at-risk population, um, are will face it in a, you know people that will will retire in the future, and this looks at you know compares different pe where people are relative to their uh, previous cohort, but that doesn't tell us anything necessarily about how many dollars they've accumulated and what kind of uh, wealth they're uh, using to prepare for retirement. So then we will turn to what we call percentile point comparisons. So then we will look at a given percentile and a wealth distribution compare again across cohorts and at different ages and look at the different components of retirement savings. So we're going to use three different wealth concepts. And the first is what we call base. The second is uh, schedule social security that includes schedule social security. And then the third concept, which we'll only be able to touch on a little bit um, is including only what's payable. So again, this is sort of building some building blocks uh, to expand our wealth measure. Right, one thing to note about our base concept is that it does add to the survey of consumer finances net worth, a measure of present value of GB wealth. And then for our, to our comprehensive measure with where we're adding social security to both the net worth from the survey and a GB estimate, we're going to have scheduled benefits and payable benefits and this will be the net of both expected future benefits minus your expected future taxes that you will be paying in the future. So the data set is at the individual level. And this, so for married couples, we're going to split half of what's been accumulated thus far. Okay, so turning to our first figure, and we'll spend a little bit extra time here because there's a lot going on and we wanna make sure everyone's on the same page before we look at more. So we're going to have a reference cohort here at age 60, which is the 1930s cohort. And then we're going to compare the 1940s cohort and the 1950s cohort around age 60. So this is actually ages 50 eight through 62. And we're gonna start out with the base concept. And what we have here is on the Y axis is going to be the sort of percentile of the reference cohort distrib wealth distribution. And on the X axis is going to be the comparison cohort distribution. So here, the red line is just a one-to-one -one mapping between the reference cohort and itself. So that's you know creating a 45 degree line. And the way we are going to read these graphs is that this horizontal gap, so that red air dashed arrow bar, is going to be if the, if the comparison cohort is ahead or behind the reference cohort. So here, the 1940s cohort, the green line, is 
almost at all points ahead or well ahead of the base cohort. So here, the way we interpret that arrow is that someone at the 55th percentile of the 1940s cohort has the same amount of base wealth as someone at the 70th percentile of the 1930s cohort. So then if we look at the 1950s cohort here, so the blue line, we see that the, about almost the bottom half of the cohort is, by wealth is a little bit behind the reference cohort here, whereas this top half or so is ahead and has more wealth at age 60 than the top half of the 1930s cohort, right? So the other thing to take from here that going back to our title about wealth inequality is that the 1950s cohort being below, <clears throat> below at lower wealth and higher at higher wealth points is that we're seeing a sort of increase in inequality in the 1950s cohort relative to the 1930s cohort. So turning to our next comparison, we will add, we're adding in here so security wealth to so we're having a comp, more comprehensive concept of wealth when we're thinking about preparing for retirement, and we see a much different bit, different picture than we did in the previous slide. So here, by adding so security wealth, the 1950s cohort does look like they're doing they're sort of ahead of the 1930s cohort in their wealth accumulation, um, sort of on the eve of retirement, right? And so remember because the so security wealth is being added to all of the cohorts here, which it just shows that the for 1950s that the social security is a much more is more relatively important for their retirement than the 1930s cohort. And so because we can't cover all of what we have in the paper here, we're going to switch earlier in the life cycle for these the rest of the relative rank comparison. So here at age 40, right, just a note reference cohort here now is the 1950s cohort, and then the comparison cohorts are the 1960s and 1970s. And <clears throat> looking first at the 1960s, the, you know, the bottom third quarter of the distributions look similar between the two cohorts, while the sort of top three quarters of the cohort um, is ahead or has accumulated more wealth at age 40 than the 1950s. Whereas the story looks a bit different if we look at the 1970s cohort. So here, almost three quarters of the cohort is behind where the 1950s cohort is in terms of wealth accumulation, sort of mid mid life cycle, I guess we can call it. Um, and then the top, the top, you know, small portion, the 1970s have accumulated more wealth at the top end than the 1950s did. Right, but so this is not the whole story for these households, right? We bring in Social Security. So first, we're going to look at the um, just the scheduled the scheduled benefits, and here, sort of that scheduled benefits really closing the gap for the 1970s cohort. However, the big asterisk here is that as of right now, Social Security is not fully payable for uh, much of the 1970s um, expected retirement. So, if we bring in payable Social Security wealth. <clears throat> which here is these dash lines, basically by switching back to payable, it kind of the 1970s goes back to being having a, a notable shortfall at age 40 relative to the 1950s cohort. And so now we will switch gears and start looking at what we call the percentile point comparison. So here we're only going to look at a couple different sort of pieces of the, the percentiles of the wealth distribution. Right, so here we're starting at the 25th percentile. And so we can, on one figure, we can look at age 40, age 50, and age 60, and we can look at the different cohorts at each of these ages. So the first thing to note, sort of a high level comment here is that the social security wealth really dominates the other forms of wealth for households that find themselves at the 25th percentile of their cohort distribution. And even for all of these uh, sort of the youngest cohort in each of the comparisons, the sort of difference between scheduled and payable is really notable and is really contributing to kind of what we would think about as possibly their observed shortfall. Right, so for the 1970s cohort um, at age 40, only about half of their scheduled benefits are considered payable. And they don't have a lot of what we call base wealth accumulated at that point. Right. So the other thing to note is that if we do look at the blue bars, which is sort of we think of maybe as households of their active savings that they're doing um, over their life cycle of the lifetime, or the 1960s cohort at age 50 is notably behind the 1940s and 1950s. And the Social Security kind of brings them up to closer to the range where the 
other cohorts were at age 50, but they're still facing kind of a notable gap and a bit behind. Did we turn to the, the median um, of each of these distributions, right? Here we're seeing, not surprisingly, we're seeing more base wealth accumulated, but that social security really is playing a you know, big role in the resources that they are going to you know, rely upon when they reach retirement age. And so here again, you know, you're still seeing that if we remove what's you know, currently scheduled but not payable, it is still having a notable impact on sort of the wealth of the, the youngest cohort uh, in these age comparisons. And then just turning to the top of the distribution so we can uh, look at that Social Security does, you know, is, uh, you know, not the most of their wealth, but it is going to play a role in the resources that they do use in retirement. But we also do see here in particular the sort of increase in the wealth that the top of the distribution has accumulated relative to earlier cohorts. So at nine, you know, at age 60, the 1940s and 1950s top of the distribution is well ahead of where the 1930s cohort was at that same age. And we're seeing, you know, there's some, you still do see even some notable separation even earlier in the life cycle at age 40 with the 1960s and 1970s having, you know, 20% or 30% more wealth accumulated at that age. So sort of that's another point to sort of this widening of wealth inequality over time. Um, so again, a few high level takeaways, but I think that there's, you know, there's a lot of questions that come out of the work we've done too, is that how are we want to think about who's going to face shortfalls in the future. And, um, you know, if we're thinking, I think some of it is that you know, people are, are still accumulating wealth and maybe things are slightly not uh, worse than current co cohort of retirees, but maybe it's not as dramatic as we would think. 